double hook up. Nice. Hey folks, Captain Mike here from Salty Cape. And today I'm east of Chatham. I am exactly where my buddy found them yesterday. There's definitely some birds in moderate signs of activity, but it's still, still, still not hot and heavy yet. So we're working the towels. I'm looking at the fish finder, looking for bait. There's birds scattered all over. They're very interested. So what we're gonna do is just sort of cruise around and just get the lay of the land. We've seen a crash over here, seen a crash over there. We're just gonna just, just patrol the area, recon the area, just again, to get the lay of the land. Once we start identifying the patterns of the birds, we're gonna vector in on more of a strategy. approach today is staying with the life now there's a series of like schools or pods if you will of sand eels and tuna scattered throughout it's hard to know where to be because the schools are small but they're staying up a long time so we're using a technique today called walk and gun and so we're keeping in gear maybe a little faster than this eight or ten miles per hour or we're staying nimble if we see a good feed we're gonna drop the hammer sneak up to it send a top water on the perimeter a kerplunk harness jig down the middle and that's our play for today. Pretty juicy. We've got some birds all sort of tightly packed, ton of bait. We're actually marking fish in the fish finder. So I'm gonna cast this harness jig, let it sink a little bit and blind cast it and work it, get down some nice crescent shaped targets on the finder below. Now this is looking pretty juicy. Again, no hot and heavy feeds, but we're just working the tells, eyes on the horizon. And uh, you know, at this stage of the game, a series of blind casts. These birds are very insistent that they're right here. Drop this jig right in the middle. Gonna let it sink. I'm going to twitch it as it drops. I'm going to let it drop a little more. Yeah, got a tuna. There we go. That was it. Oh, yep, yeah, he's on. Swimming at me. Just dropped it right in there. Not 100% sure he knows it's hooked. But here we go. So it pays to blind cast, as you can see. <laughs> oh, the spit. Oh, there he goes. Just dropped it right in that center of the birds. Swimming at me. There he goes. Strag has seen a few fish in its day. Fish is being super crazy. Wow, just took off. Decent fish. Pretty tried and true technique to just drop a harness jig right in the middle of the bird sitting like that. There was no feeds. We knew there had to be life. There was bait, the fish finders lit up and uh, always pays to blind cast. So that was a very anticlimactic hit. You, know, you just cast and drop. When you fish like that, when you fish the cast and drop with the harness jig or a soft bait like this, is the hits often on the drop. So the fish is coming from below and grabbing it. So it, it feels more like a disturbance in the line than it does like a traditional hit, so, you know. And uh, but I'll take a hit any way I can get it if it means a bent rod. And uh, so that's one tip is just always pay attention to your lure while it's on the drop. Because it felt almost like a scup hit. It was like a tap tap. And again, that's from the fish coming below and hitting it and keeping and arcing over. It's not a dramatic hit like you might expect. I think a lot of people miss hits with these weighted top baits on the drop. With good rigging and heavy gear like I have here, I always like to point out it's okay just to trust your tackle to end this quickly. I'm putting a lot of pressure on this fish. I have hollow core braid. 
a nice 100 pound test, brand new, wind on floral leader, harness jig, good crimping, or at least I hope good crimping. So I just have total confidence in my gear. This isn't a very big fish. And so to land it quickly, I just put a lot of boots at the end game here. Okay, I'm gonna bring this fish over to Jack so he's got a head shot. Perfect. Right in the head. Is that strong enough to lift in? Yeah. yeah bring him in. They're always heavier than they look. There we go. Nice head shot, Jack. This is Jack's third tuna he's ever gaffed. He's three for three with a perfect placement in the head. Now, you'll see where the gaff mark is right here. <clears throat> Jack gaffed it right in the head, and that's gonna protect all this beautiful meat inside the fish. <clears throat> well, that was easy. Caught this perfect eating size fish. Gonna de-hook them, take care of the fish, and get them on ice. So we got one on the board, and the feet has sort of gone down. There's little pods of birds and life. It's greasy, calm water. Not my favorite condition for casting, is uh, you know the easier you can see the fish, the easier they can see you. So I'm just going to work on a little recon pattern just to patrol these different birds. There's a lot of bait, a lot of life. Uh, the feeds have gone down for a little bit, but nice simple recon pattern. I'll go a little this way, a little that way, and back around. Just canvas the area efficiently. Eyeballs peeled, looking at every bird, looking at the electronics, and uh, just I break for all signs of life. I see some whale tufts over there. That's a good sign. I really think we where we want to be, and uh, I see some fish over on the horizon. I'm just going to pick up and go. But the key is just hanging with the life. So this is how you work a slider. So whether you're leading fish or casting adjacent to a school or just dropping it in, it's all the same retreat, at least in my opinion. So you fire it out, get control of your line, get that slack out, now I'm engaged, my tip is down, a really, really fast, a pause, a reel, pause, reel, pause, and then I let it sink. So that retrieve, where it speeds up and stops, often draws reaction strikes. Now that's the retrieve where I'm casting to fish I can see. Like there's some fish, I, those birds are doing something weird over there. So I'm gonna cast that out. Looks like there's some fish swimming there. I'm gonna reel, pause, let it sink to get under that bird. In this high speed retrieve, well this reel needs service, this, that high speed retrieve works for me when the fish are being very finicky. You wanna get that fear of missing out, that FOMO strike, the reaction strike. The wind's picking up a little, so the good news is it'll be easier to get them to eat. The hard news is it'll be get harder to see them milling, but... Oh, right here. Oh, I got him. Double hook up. Nice. Mine's faster than yours. Wow. Yep, that was definitely a milling fish. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Hey Jack, I'm gonna go over you and back here. I'll let you deal with that guy up here. <laughs> Double header. That was perfect. Those fish milling all to ourselves. It's gonna turn the boat so we both have the same amount of fight to fish these. Dude, that was freaking awesome. So we have two fish on, both needed unique boat placement. Jack's fish is closer than mine, so I'm gonna err on his, see if I can't get my fish to cooperate with his. So at least we're both sort of, kind of sort on the same side. So we've got two fish on. I'm gonna to try to release this guy quick so I can help Jack with his. I think 
this is bigger than mine. Mine's closer. Now we got Jack's fish coming aft. I think his fish might be a little bigger or maybe a different hook placement. You're free to come back here, Jack. So we're at the end game here and the tuna is doing his death spiral thing. It's a little deep. So I'm gonna ask Jack to is to put lots of boots on this fish and just trust the gear. We took our time with our wind on leaders, all our knots, all our connections, all our crimps, all our split rings. Everything's top shelf gear. So we're not worried about breaking it off. But the key to remember is if this fish is rest, if the angler's resting, same with the fish. And um, you know, it's amazing how much pressure you can put on the fish, particularly at the end game here. This is um, where a lot of fish are lost because as the battle goes, the hole gets warm bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, so the key, I err on the side of landing them quick. It's also better for the release to land it quick. So we're gonna try to release this fish, which isn't always easy with treble. So I want Jack to give me a rod and a half length of line. The fish will probably take some more out. Then I'm gonna grab the leader. We have a 100 pound test fluoro, the strong crimp connection. So I'm gonna leader the fish here. I think I can de-hook this with the gaff. So I'm just gonna grab that hook, pop number one. Now I'm gonna grab this second hook. Pop number two. There he goes. talk about the gear we're using today we've got saw baits and plugs on the menu and namely we have the hoagie harness jig and the hoagie slider now the fish are keyed in on all on sand eel so obviously all of sand eel patterns is the name of the game today with the harness jig obviously that has a faster sink rate than the plug so we're going to plunk that into the feeds or in the perimeter and let that sink and work our deeper game while the slider we're going to focus on more of a top water presentation with a couple of different retrie real retrieve speeds so here's the outfit i've been using this is my standard bluefin tuna setup as you can hear from the <laughs> coffee grinder I've been using today. This outfit has seen some miles and probably do for a little service, but doesn't owe me anything with all the fish we've got. But I've got the Stella 18,000. It's rig, it's spooled with 100 pound test Jerry Brown hollow core. It's got a 100 pound test fluoro casting leader. And then I've tied directly to a crane swivel and a split ring where I've attached the harness jig with a pair of split ring pliers. And this outfit I'm comfortable landing fish to up to 250 pounds. This is my workhorse outfit. Maybe it's a little overkill for the smaller fish and a little underkill for some of the bigger fish. But as far as outfits go, this size outfit is my bread and butter outfit and gets me through 90% of my bluefin tuna fishing situation. So it's time to head back to the barn before we get beat up too badly by Monomoy. But the takeaway today is the power of the simplicity of jigging and casting for tuna. We came out here with these four setups. I had a uh, cod jigging rod floating around a little earlier, but it's just simple. Everything fits in my, what I call my tuna crate, it's just a small collection of tuna lures. I've got my nice, easy to use casting lures. The fish today were keyed in on sand eel, so I really only needed two lures. I only used two lures today, just the harness jig, just the slider. We kept it simple, we worked the life, we had a great day. I don't know how many fish we caught, but it was awesome. But like I said, time to, time to beat that wind through Monomoy. Yeah.